Lane. I'm Carlton Sharp, pastor of Faith Christians in the Church, right here in Beaumont, Texas. And we're here on what's happening in our neighborhood. And today, my special guest is Mr. Joseph Trahan. Welcome, Joseph. Hello, hello. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Hey, listen, first of all, tell us a little bit about yourself. So I am a fifth generation Jefferson County resident, born and raised here in Beaumont, Texas, uh, looking to continue a legacy of service here in the community. I went to the University of Texas at Austin, and upon graduating, I chose to return because I wanted to try and make a difference in a community that's given me so much over the years. So, so you're a hook 'em horns. I am <laughs> proud. <laughs> so, so now that's interesting, Joseph, because most uh, young people, uh, when they graduate from college, they leave. That's very true. And and not come back home to make an impact mm -hmm. in the community that, that they grew up in. And and part of it has to do with a lack of representation. People don't feel that there are opportunities for individuals in their 20s and 30s to take on positions of leadership. And I think that has to do with a lack of willingness uh, during this juncture in time to extend a hand of friendship and assistance to help mentor people. Uh, and I'm hoping that I can change those dynamics. So, so tell us, what are you running for? So I'm running for chair of the Jefferson County Democratic Party. Of course, I hope to have your vote. I uh, am a proud Democrat. Uh, my family has been voting Democrat for five generations, but I do make it a point of doing my own research and upon learning about the various platforms and within each party, I identify most with the Democratic Party. And I want to see us win here in Jefferson County. So, so, so tell us, uh, uh, what does the Democratic Party chair do? So the responsibilities of the Democratic Party chair include providing a vision for the party and pointing us in a direction to which others can help follow. Uh, within that structure, they provide uh, organizations within the party. In addition to that organization, there is also the uh, importance of fundraising, to have adequate funding for uh, many of our candidates who are running in, a, uh, in the general election. Yeah, because you need money. That's, that's correct. <laughs> it's, it's very important. You, you need money and people, right? Money and people. <laughs> yeah. so, 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 so what influenced you to run? So for me, the biggest thing was wanting to be a change agent in my community. I noticed in my involvement in Austin that the Democratic Party there, I believe, had more of a relevance to the communities in which they said they were going to serve. And so bringing that community-centered leadership back to Jefferson County is something that I would like to establish. I am pleased to say that I have the endorsements of Congressman Nick Lampson and County Clerk Carolyn Guidry, and they have both been strong forces in encouraging me uh, to take on the torch and try and make a difference and, and, and continue the legacies that they've been able to establish for our party. Now, Joseph, you're 23 years old. <laughs> That's correct. I, I mean, other 23-year-olds are thinking about buying a car. Right. I mean, doing this, that, and the other, but you are actually want to be a leader in our community. I do. I do. I, I think that it's exceptionally important. Uh, and young people are really going to be, and it, and it sounds cliche, the leaders of tomorrow. We are the ones that a lot of, that both parties are seeking uh, our vote. and. For me, in Jefferson County, our elections are becoming so close on a county level that we have to be able to grow and broaden our base. And part of that has to do with including college students, recent graduates, and young professionals into the conversation. So, so, so you, said, you said that it's so important for uh, people to get out and vote, mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in your particular case, Democratic. That's correct. So, so I mean, the last election, it seems as though the Republicans uh, had a greater foothold than the Democrats did. And I think part of that has to do with natural disaster, Hurricane Harvey. Uh, there were thousands of individuals that were displaced both in Palmont and Port Arthur, especially in Port Arthur. When I was block walking in Montrose and El Vista and other portions of Port Arthur, it was clear that people were more focused on getting their lives put back together than going to the polls to vote. And so I think that gave the Republican Party quite an advantage uh, because historically people who are working class, people who are lower income, uh, people who are living paycheck to paycheck tend to be Democrats because the party is what I believe are those who champion the issues of the working class. And so a lot of people were in disarray, and I think that impacted it. So if you become the Democratic chair, what do you plan on doing differently uh, in this upcoming election than they didn't do on the last election? Well, first and foremost, I want to continue a lot of the progress that was made by Kate Bernson, our former chair, with the Get Out the Vote efforts, coordinated campaigns. That was very effective. But I think that when it comes to long-term strategy and getting people to get out and vote, it's going to take more than showing up at someone's door right before an election asking for their vote. And uh, I, I'm looking at trying and making sure that the Democratic Party, our volunteers, or the whole apparatus are present 
before, during, and well after an election to try and uh, pierce through the uh, the voters that are very apathetic, people that want to stay home, that wonder, well, what are you doing for me? Yeah. You know, or, or, or showing up at, at, at someone's church <laughs> right before the election. Right before an election, <laughs> and there, you know? there has to be. That's why it's so important to have strong relationships, so people can see you in the community that you're advocating for their issues beyond simply their vote, but wanting to know what is it that matters to you? What are the issues that you believe the Democratic Party here in Jefferson County ought to be talking about? And I want to drive that conversation because beyond the traditional approach of the party to go and get out the vote and make sure that Democrats like Zena Stevens win, uh, we have to be able to also be ingrained in community affairs. Use our influence and show up to commissioner's court, uh, city hall, or uh, school board meetings and try and get people engaged and address those issues because if our community can succeed, the Democratic Party will succeed. So what does success look like for you? I mean, in this upcoming election, I mean, election time is, is, is uh, early voting begins when? Uh, February 18th and it ends February 28th. And then the election day is when? March 3rd. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so for those of you who are watching today, listen, you can early vote from February the 18th mm -hmm. through uh, February the 28th, and then uh, the election day is March 3rd, so you got to get out and vote. And there's no excuse that, oh, I forgot about the election. You right. have a weekend, for example, during early voting. So even if you're working during the week, you can still go on the weekend. And, and they vote. can vote anywhere. Anywhere, and that's thanks to Carolyn Guidry. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you, it's not just in your local precinct, mm -hmm. but you can vote anywhere throughout the city that's or correct. the county. That's correct. Okay, so, so what does success look like for you? Success of the Democratic Party looks like winning by a landslide. I know that it's going to take uh, a number of cycles to get to that point, but I believe that if we establish a long-term strategy, uh, much of what I talk about, uh, we can achieve that. What success doesn't look like, I think, for me is when we look at county elections and we're winning or losing by a thousand votes or less i want to see our democrats win by five and six thousand votes and just blow it out of the water yeah. that's success but success also looks like strong community-centered relationships where when we knock on a door during election time i know you i've seen you right you're in my community you have my vote that's more powerful than who are you what, what do you want you know, I've never seen you around here. That's two totally different perspectives, and the former is the one that is going to get us success. Now, in the last election, uh, it seems as though the, the Republicans and the uh, President Trump carried Jefferson County. That's correct. Donald Trump won by less than half of a percentage point here in Jefferson County, and I was disgusted by it. But I think that has to do with this feeling in politics today, that, that and it resonates with me as well. We are tired of people who are politicians, right. who say one thing and do another, right. that ask for your vote, but then are nowhere to be found In four after years. election. <laughs> and people are tired of it, yeah. and they're tired of career politicians. And I understand that. And I think that we have to get to a point, as I said before, and I will say it over and over again, no matter how repetitive it sounds, we have to get back to community-centered leadership because that is what is going to provide validity and credibility to our candidates in the Democratic Party, as well as the Democratic Party on the state and national level. So, so what, what part does the Democratic Party chair plays in the candidates that decide to run for office? So the responsibility of the party chair during a primary is to make sure that all the rules and regulations are being followed per state law, as well as the bylaws instituted by the Texas State Democratic Party. It is inappropriate and unethical in my view for a chair or uh, anyone who is in a position of leadership within the party to put their hand on the weighted scale of a primary. I'm looking to support all Democrats and so when it comes to time for the general election once the democratic process has taken place internally through a primary that the chair makes sure that the candidates are provided all the resources necessary to have a successful campaign and that's where fundraising, fund, fundraising excuse me, is key. <laughs> that we're able to have enough money to not only make sure that the headquarters is in existence, but that we have block walkers, that we have phone bankers, and that if there are candidates that need some assistance with uh, ad buys or signs, that the party itself can provide that assistance. The, that's the major responsibility of a chair, is to make sure that our candidates in the general election are provided all the resources they need to succeed. So, so, so what makes you a good leader uh, uh, and the one that mm -hmm. should lead the Democratic Party well, in Jefferson County? For me, Leadership ought to be principled, it ought to be progressive, and it ought to be inclusive. And that means making it a point of wanting to gather a consensus 
within the party, not favoring one faction over another, but letting people know that if you're a resident of Jefferson County, if you're a Democratic voter, you have a place within our party. To me, leadership ought to be service-centered. I have, have a number of mentors over the years, uh, one of which was my late grandfather, Howard Trahan. He served on the school board in Beaumont Independent School District for yeah. over 20 years. Yeah. He was a prominent civil rights leader. And I was able to see what effective leadership looks like and what it ought to be. And he always made it a point of remembering where it was that he came from and making sure that the people that got him into positions of elected office were not forgotten. Right. And so that's important. You have to have leadership that is conscious, leadership that is personally aware, and leadership that is connected to the community, that is ingrained in community affairs, so that people feel comfortable enough to approach them. I want people to know that I'm accessible. I'm someone that wants to hear your experience. I want to hear what plagues you at night. What are your concerns and how I can be of use either through myself or someone that I know to provide a solution to that issue. And so as I said before, it's about being principled and standing for the values of the Democratic Party and being willing to fight for them. It also has to do, as I said, with being progressive, meaning that we have to be forward thinking, we must be innovative, and we have to be inclusive. Uh, and all of those components, I think, are what make me an effective leader. I've served in various leadership capacities, whether it was being student body president in my high school to leading a prestigious uh, student endowed lectureship at the University of Texas, or uh, working to at what I'm doing now, which is spearheading an effort to bring a nonprofit organization known as the Children's Center that addresses issues of human trafficking, child homelessness, and, and runaway issues here in Jefferson County. And so all of that has been centered around community. And I think that's what all, in a nutshell, makes me an effective leader. And I believe that I'm in a unique position because my perspective is filled not only with leaders that have been in my family, but also leaders that support me in this campaign. Uh, and I also have a unique perspective in the sense that I'm biracial. And so I'm aware of the distinctions and cultural differences that exist within both the white and black community. And I think that we have to do a better job here in Jefferson County of unifying individuals, irrespective of race, culture, religious identity, so that we can be stronger for right. it. Uh, because I'm aware that there are different perspectives that exist in different parts of town. And we have to be able to advocate for those issues with one another and find out we have an issue uh, in situation A. We can't solve it among these group of people, but I know this group of people over here. And they may be of use and vice versa. And so I think leadership is also about connecting the dots. I may not have the answer for you, but I know somebody that does. Right, so, right, And right. that's its receptivity, is being able to identify what an issue is and who or what can possibly address that. So, so what are some of the things that you plan on implementing if you are uh, chosen and elected to be the Democratic Party chair? So when I am elected chair of the Jefferson County Democratic Party, I intend to institute better organizational structure within the party. I would like to create uh, permanent standing committees on fundraising, event plan planning, uh, candidate scouting, and volunteerism. And I think it's really crucial to talk about candidate scouting. For many years, the Jefferson County Democratic Party, and I would even say the Republican uh, Party, have always tried to scramble to find people to run for office. To me, we don't start by looking for someone six months before an election, but identifying and cultivating leaders years in advance so that we know here are their strengths, these are their weaknesses that we can help strengthen, and then get them involved in the community. And by the time it comes uh, for an election, they're familiar in the community. People identify with them, and they're more likely to get that support and more confident to go out and run. I'm also uh, very particular about making our party more relevant in the community. And that means being present beyond just election day. Uh, going door to door, having uh, neighborhood block parties, cook-offs, you name it, we need to be able to approach and reach as many people as possible. And that, I think, is important with off-election years. It's crucial. But I also would like to grow the precinct chair list. Mm. There are over 100 precincts in Jefferson County. We have less than 40 of those precincts with a chair. And for those that aren't familiar with what a precinct chair is, they are the eyes, ears, and face of the Democratic Party within their neighborhoods, within their precincts. They are our advocates. And so we have to make sure that we have a presence in every nook and cranny of Jefferson County, because Jefferson County is bigger than Beaumont. 
We have Port Arthur, we have Groves, Port Natchez, you name it. And there are also a number of unincorporated areas, Hampshire, Finette, Cheek, that tend to be off on the wayside, and we can't forget China. I mean, there's all <laughs> parts of the community we should have representation right, there. Right, 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 right. Even if it's uncomfortable, even if we can only get 10 votes out of a precinct, those 10 votes can make or break an election. And Especially so, if it's a thousand, a thousand exactly. uh, votes uh, you know, between the two candidates. Exactly. And we saw that in the 2018 election. And so by growing the precinct chair list and providing them the resources they need in terms of up-to-date data to know who are the Democrats in their neighborhoods, who do they, who doors do they need to go knock on? If they want to host some kind of meet and greet reception at their home and let people know I am the representative of the Democratic Party in this precinct, come on, the party should provide the resources to make sure that they have a good reception. Things of that nature, thinking outside the box, being more specific about what it is that I want to do. I don't want to talk uh, in, in uh, being ambiguous. You know, and I think oftentimes uh, a number of candidates tend to talk about, we're going to get out the vote. We're going to vote blue. We're going to get Donald Trump out of office. Well, how are you going to do that? And those are the kind of questions that need to be asked to people. We need to be specific in our intention and, and be result driven, not, uh, not simply giving in to rhetoric or people speaking in, in, in sound bites. Right, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> sound like, so it sounds like you want to be innovative. I do, and I believe that I am. I've exhibited that uh, for the last nine years that I've been involved in leadership positions, uh, and I don't believe that I would have been elected in a number of positions if the people that were within that election didn't believe in my leadership and my effectiveness. So how, how do you feel about term limits uh, for, for, for individual candidates? I'm not necessarily uh, against that. I think that the argument for term limits is, is well made. But I also recognize that seniority is important. Be, uh, for example, within Senate or Congress, a lot of the uh, appropriations, meaning the funds that go to our communities, that, that fund our roads, our bridges, our social programs, our schools, are often dictated by the influence and seniority that an individual has within office. And so we have to have some sort of balance. And if we are going to institute term limits, we have to be able to restructure the way in which seniority works in the House and in the Senate. Uh, but for me, I think the best term limit is at the ballot box. If you're not doing a good job, vote them out. If they're doing an effective job, whether they've been there 10 or 20 years, if they're doing right by the people, keep them in. I see no reason to vote them out. Okay, so, so now you're going to have a kickoff. I am. <laughs> yes, sir, I am. I hope to see you there. So tell us about the kickoff that's going to be coming up real soon. Yes, so I'm having a campaign kickoff Thursday, January 16th at the Compro Center uh, off uh, Cardinal Drive. Uh, it's going to be from 5.30 to 8 p.m. We're going to have gumbo, refreshments. We're going to have a uh, choreographed dance team that's going to be performing. We're going to have appearances by Congressman Nick Lampson and County Clerk Carolyn Guidry, who are going to be speaking in favor of my candidacy, as well as a number of other elected officials and candidates that have come out in support of me. And I really am just looking forward to engaging with voters, talking about my vision for the Democratic Party, but more importantly, having heart-to-heart -heart about what is it that I can do to make a difference in the party, to make a difference in how you decide to vote? Because I hope that you will vote for Democrats. I believe that the Democratic Party are the best representatives for people. I understand that with all the national conversation that's taking place and the drama with Donald Trump and it's he said, she said, you know, I understand that that can get frustrating and it, it can make people turned off to politics. But we have to recognize that all politics starts locally. And if we are able to have a good structure here in Jefferson County, I believe it will influence uh, our state and national leaders because they will take notice and they will want to model themselves after successful counties. I want to see Jefferson County be what it once was, a strong blue bastion of hope, much like what we see in Harris County, Fort Bend County, and Travis County. And I think that we can do it here. We have the numbers, we have hardworking people. It's just a matter of giving them something to fight for and believe in. And I hope that I can play whatever role necessary to inspire people and motivate them to get out to the polls and vote for Democrats. So, 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 Joseph, who can vote for you? I mean, I mean, it's it's the Democratic chair. That's so, right. who can vote for the Democratic chair? So, the my election is in the primary. Uh, that will that will I will not be in a, a general election. This is a Democratic primary. So, all those who vote Democrat can vote for me throughout Jefferson County. But there are also people that I've talked to that identify as independents that believe in me, they want to see the Democratic Party thrive because that's what they lean towards, but they don't like the way that it exists today. 
uh, and they're willing to go and vote in a primary. So anyone truly can go and vote in a Democratic primary. It's up to them. Uh, but overall, it's going to be a lot of uh, proud, dedicated Democrats that are voting in a primary that are going to get out and vote. And it's countywide. So it's anyone throughout Jefferson County can vote for me. Because I'm towards the bottom of the ballot, but I'm number one in your heart. <laughs> I'm also number one in the race. You know, and so, you know, Joseph Trahan for chair, don't forget that. Trahan, Trahan, Trahan. So, so, okay, so how can he get in touch with you? So I have a website, josephtrahan.com. And once you scroll through to look at my background as well as my qualifications and platform points, at the very bottom there's an option to sign in. Uh, and again, that's josephtrahan.com. You can sign on to my email list. You can also follow me on Facebook at Joseph Trahan. I have a, a public figure that uh, Facebook page that's about my campaign, but I also have a private Facebook page. You're more than welcome to follow one and add another. Message me. I'll be happy to have a cup of coffee with you. I'll give you my phone number. We can have a great conversation. I want to be accessible because it's you. You are the one that is the Democratic Party. Without you, we cannot win. I can't do this all alone. We have to do it together. I can be a vessel of knowledge. I can help point people in a direction, but I want to see people to my left and right standing shoulder to shoulder, willing to help roll up our sleeves, get out the vote for Democrats in 2020 and beyond. Hey, listen, I put Joseph information at the bottom of the screen there. It's joseph at josephtrahan.com. His number is 409-651-7405. Or on his flyer here, look at the top of it. It says josephtrahan.com, and you can get in contact with him there. So, uh... So that's all your information. So hey, it is. <laughs> hey, Joseph, I want to thank you, man. Listen, thank you so much for, for having me. For you being 23 years old mm -hmm. and running for a public office, I mean, coming back to your community, I I commend anybody who runs for a public office and put their name in the hat instead of sitting on the sideline and complaining about what is right. not happening. You're getting in the race mm -hmm. uh, to 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 affect change in our area. So I want to thank you for that. Thank you so much. Hey, listen, if you have one last word you want to tell the people who are watching before we get off today, go right ahead. If you want to see Donald Trump kicked out of office, if you want to be able to see Democrats elected up and down the ballot, especially here in the state of Texas, it starts with Jefferson County. If Jefferson County loses its blue power, it's going to be a lot harder for people like Beto O'Rourke, who come along and, and run for U.S. Senate or for governor or for lieutenant governor, to actually win. Our county is the final blue county in southeast Texas, and we have to fight for it. And I'm the man for the job. Hey, well, listen. <laughs> well, listen, I want to thank Joseph for joining us today. Right here on What's Happening in Our Neighborhood, I want to thank you for joining us right here. Now, remember, uh, we'll be back next time right here on What's Happening in Our Neighborhood. We'll see you next time. Be blessed. Bye-bye.